On stage, they are manic. And their fans, some of them very, very young, are equally crazed. They have sold more than three million albums, and their punk slash pop slash alternative rock hits include the hugely popular Sugar We're Going Down. And their current hit. They've been nominated for a Grammy for Best New Artist. Fallout Boy. Been morphed into plastic action figure toys. Without a doubt, Fallout Boy has fallen deep into popular culture. They are famous. They are rich. They are rock stars. You wake up and you're like, how did this happen? They formed in 2001 when guitarist Joe Troman, now 22, met singer Patrick Stump, also 22. They worked together at this suburban border store. Both were juniors in high school. Stump at Glenbrook South in Glenview, Troman at New Trier in Wilmette, where he says he didn't necessarily fit in. Fall into the gap. That's what I did. They then met bass player Pete Wentz at a concert. I was kind of like your flamboyant jock. Wentz, now 27, had also gone to New Trier but transferred to this Winnetka private school. He graduated in 1997. Peter certainly sometimes walked to the beat of his own drummer. He was sort of experimenting with, uh, with, with who he was. Rounding out the group, 26-year-old drummer Andy Hurley, who grew up near Milwaukee. Billowing backpacks, radioactive man! It's the worst villain of them all! I see him, Fallout Boy. They chose their band name based on this superhero from The Simpsons. They practiced every day inside their parents' North Shore homes, eventually graduating to venues like the Fireside Bowl on West Fullerton. We really sucked in the beginning, like really, really badly. So there were people who came and checked us out and probably got to like us because of our personality. So even if, like, the music sounded real bad. It was entertaining to watch. <laughs> we were also told that the songs that we were singing, they would never be hit songs. People would never understand them, that people don't have the capability to listen and consume intelligent pop music anymore and that we needed to dumb them down. We just wanted to thank you guys very much for proving them wrong. Then in early 2005, Wentz nearly died after overdosing on anti-anxiety medications in a Chicago area parking lot. The group had been recording its first major label album. Sometimes you just do things, you know, when before you realize kind of the magnitude of what it's going to be, like you take pictures of yourself and you intend them for one person and then all of a sudden it's just this explosion. You know? He's talking about these rather sexual photos that ended up on the internet. They're one of the web's most searched subjects ever. The mom said, um, sent me an email that said, be more careful in the future. And I said, don't ever go on the internet again, please. Thank you. <laughs> the boys maintain and relish their Chicago roots. They recently rocked a Bears playoff game. They sit firmly atop local radio charts. Probably one of our top five biggest bands. And they bought homes here. Joe, for example, in one of the most exclusive parts of Lincoln Park. He's just a couple doors down. I know, I know. Okay, so did the neighbors know? Um... Some of them do, but most of them don't really care. They're older. The boys hang out at places like Club Foot, Celebrity, the Pick Me Up Cafe, the Lakeview Broadcasting Company, and the Wiener Circle. We're like brothers. I really like the analogy of dudes who go to war. <laughs> Dreams again? There's a total, total chance, no matter how big your last record was, that you will be wiped off the face of the planet by the time your next record comes out. Very true, yet these North Shore boys don't plan on a fallout anytime soon. Someday someone's going to be writing about this generation of artists and like, we're in there somewhere, you know what I'm saying? We're an extra in that <laughs> damn movie. <laughs> Mark Saxonmeyer, Fox News, Chicago.